Today I am super excited to be bringing you this month's Gypsy and Witch project. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while and I've just been waiting for the right moment and this is it. I was inspired by many people on Pinterest as well as the Frugal Crafter here on YouTube and I'll put a link to her video below. But this is my take on some enchanted bubble wands. I created these with chopsticks and polymer clay and wire and bling and I had a blast. If you guys are interested in seeing how I did this, please stick around. They're so much fun. I know you're going to love them. Super easy for kids old and young alike and they make amazing bubbles. guys stick around I'll show you how I did it okay guys let's get started I've preheated my oven to 275 Fahrenheit and the first thing we're gonna do is take a stick now I'm using chopsticks you can use a stick in the yard a knitting needle anything. The next thing I'm going to use is some 18 gauge aluminum wire. Again, you can use the wire of your choice, but what we're going to be doing now is actually do the bubble blowing part and we're going to attach it to the stick and then we'll be covering that part with polymer clay. So I'm going to show you one example, but it's limitless possibilities on how to do these. So we need to make a shape. I'm going to just wrap our wire around this paint here, but you can also use cookie cutters if you'd like, and I'm going to leave this right on the roll, but if you want to do something like that, you literally just conform the wire to the outside shape that you want, leave a little tail at the end, okay? and then create your shape. So that's a little wonky, but I'm just gonna do a circle right now. So, I'm gonna use this. Any size diameter that you want, you can make these as big as you want. I'm gonna leave a little tail on the end here. And we're literally just going to wrap it around. I'm using the same wire that I just used and we're going to twist it like that. Okay, and now I'm going to hold this wire and I'm just going to twist it using my thing here to make it tight. Don't overwork your wire because it will break if it heats up enough. Um, and don't worry too much about the perfection of the shape. I like them a little off but the wire is very forgiving and you can easily conform it to whatever shape you'd like. So there you have that. And the next thing we're gonna do is attach it to our stick. Very easily, I'm just going to lay this here. I'm gonna leave a little bit of this sticking out, but we'll lay it here and I'm gonna wrap this like this getting this back here all right there it doesn't have to be however you get it on there all right and then we're gonna go all the way down and this step is important because it gives the clay something to adhere to you can also do the same technique using um, hot glue and I did a, a witchy wands video two years ago where I showed how to do hot glue and you could do the same thing with this instead of polymer clay you know once you reach this point just drip your glue down and go from there but I want to use clay for this so we're coming all the way up all right and then we're gonna leave a long tail and this is optional 
but I like to do a little spiral in the center or you could even use this to wrap around the outside of the wand when we're done. But we're literally just going to leave this tail hanging out here. I don't measure, just kind of eyeballing it. All right. So there is our basic shape. Like I said, you can really go to town with these. Um, you could do flowers, hearts, anything. Don't, you know, check out Pinterest. There's loads of pictures. So there you have it. Now, our next step is to add the clay. I'm using some uh, Primo clay today. I actually have some black that I had been working with um, before, so I'm going to just continue with that and give it a good, you know, you want to condition it really well, make it nice and soft. I've already done that. I have some here. I also have a pasta machine out here, a clay rolling machine, if you will, uh, which makes life a little easier. And I'm going to pull out a piece of glass to work on. And I am going to run it through my pasta machine uh, just to make it even thinner. Okay. So there you have it. Again, I don't do any measuring here. This is all eyeballing it. I'm going to show you one way of doing this uh, to create like a forest stick, if you will. Um, you can also do, um, if you, well, this we're going to turn into a stick, but if you want, you can also lay the clay and then just use a texture sheet, uh, something like this, to actually press into the clay uh, if you want. That makes it look really cool. And again, there's no uh, exact science. So I'm just, you see what I'm doing here. I'm just forming the clay to the wand. The wire on the inside is going to be really helpful for us. I'm going to just eyeball it, cut it there. I'm going to press it close. And, you know, you want to have enough clay that your wire is not going to stick through when you're conforming it to it. So if you need to add more, you can. And you're just going to cover your piece. Now I see here there's a piece up here. I can feel the wire coming through. So I'm just going to add on, you know, another, it doesn't matter. The, the fact that it's irregular is exactly how nature makes a stick, you know. Um, so just play around with it, okay? And once you have, you can feel if there's air bubbles, you know, work them out and get that all good. I'm going to continue building this up until I'm happy with it. And there you go. Okay. Now, if you don't want to leave fingerprints, you can wear gloves, but again, there's going to be so much on this that you're not going to notice anything. So, and I'm also going to be putting more clay over this with the vines and the leaves. Okay. So here you have it. Now, next, like I said, you're going to do texture. Now, if you want to do a texture sheet, these are great, and I've actually cut up uh, a larger one to make the smaller one, but can actually just wrap this around and press the texture into the clay. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do a stick, if you will. And I'm using black Primo clay here, but if you want, people, you can make wood grain uh, by mixing different color browns and things, but I'm not doing that. I'm just going to make 
our stick here and I'm going to make some natural knots, some unnatural natural knots, but by just using my little ball tool here, I'm going to poke some holes and make some like bullseyes. And these are like the natural rings that you would see on a tree. And I'm going to stagger them around. Maybe some of them have two rings around it. Kind of make it like an oval. I hope you could see that all right. So I'm going to do that all over, staggering on the stick. And then I'm going to take another finer ball tool and I'm just going to run lines down my stick and we're going to go around those holes and then down and around that hole. I'm kind of turning it as I go. All right, just let it kind of flow down. These are the natural outer pieces of the bark that we're creating, okay? So I'm going to cover my whole entire stick like that, and I'll be back and show you when that's done, and then we're going to put some mica powder on it. See you in a minute. Okay, this is what we're looking at, and it's perfectly imperfect. And like I said, you could do this with brown clay, you could do it with any color clay, because you could always paint this with acrylic paint but I'm going to use mica powders over it and you know I decided to do a different one just to show you the contrast and I told you about the texture and so I did one in white I did do a star and that is what that looks like okay and all I did like I said was take these little texture sheets and just press it into it all the way down the next step is fun. I'll put this aside for a second. Um, we're going to use some mica powder, some Pearl X powder, and I also have some eyeshadow here. These are the ones I'm going to use on the white one. These are the ones I'm using on the branch. Okay, this is Pearl X powder in antique bronze, and this is an elf eyeshadow in I don't know brown. You can use any kind of eyeshadow. I'm just going to give you an example and then I'll finish these off camera. I'm going to do a little mixture here. I just have a big fluffy brush and we're going to look at this. It immediately just comes to life. Okay, so that's it. We're going to cover the entire surface. I'm going to do a mixture of these two browns and then on the white one, I'm going to do purple and blue and white. Okay. So I'm going to cover these entirely. And I'll come back and show you when these are done. And then we're going to pop them in the oven for about 20 minutes just to firm them up. And then we're going to further put some more clay on them. See you when these are done. And here you have it. They look so cool already, don't they? So simple. And they come out really magical. So here's this. And I left a little extra at the bottom. We could just do like a twist or whatever. Yeah. So now we're going to bake these, like I said, for 20 minutes. I'm just going to use this um, glass bread pan, if you will. I don't use it for cooking, but I'm just going to rest these on top. I'm not worried about, you know, them having a line in it or anything because it's not going to show up at the end, but if you're concerned about it, there are other ways. I know my friend Lynn from Lynn's Crafts uses polyfill. Um, I think you can bake in cornstarch. There's other ways, but this way works well for me. You can also use a pie plate or something. Um, yeah, so I'm pop these in the oven for 20 minutes, then I'm going to let them cool, and then we're going to further embellish. Okay, these are nice and cool now, and you can leave them just like this if you want and call it a day but we're gonna take it even further and the next step I want to add some vines and some leaves and I'm going to do brown vines and green leaves on this one 
and like purplish with green on this one. And I'll show you what I'm going to use. I'll give you an example. We'll do the vines first and then the leaves. Um, I'm also going to be using some Sculpey Bacon Bond. You can use uh, liquid Sculpey, or if you don't have this, you can just do clay to clay. It will work, but this makes things stick a little better. I told you, let's work on this one, that I was going to be using some brown. So I just took, I had some various um, Primo, what is this, copper and bronze and a brown. And I just kind of took a little piece out of each one, mixed it up together, and I've rolled it up here. And I have this Macon's Clay Polymer Clay Extruder. And the disc that I have in it now is going to give us, you know, like spaghetti snakes. So um, this thing is great. I've had it for over a year. I can't remember what I paid for it, but it's really excellent and it saves your hand strength. So I'm just going to kind of roll out a little snake here, if you will and put this in the extruder and this is just like you remembered your play-doh extruder when you were a kid we're gonna put the top on super simple we're gonna make a bunch of snakes and those are gonna be our vines and I will add a little texture to our vines uh, once we get them on the thing so I just want to show you as this is coming out how much fun. It's like a spider. Okay, I'm just going to let them kind of fall naturally. And I don't care about the length. I want them to be all different sizes. And okay, I'm just going to slice these off. And I'll show you a for instance, and then I'm going to continue off camera uh, with both of them. For this one, I'm going to be using this uh, Primo in some kind of purple, purple pearl. Isn't that great? So these will be the vines for that, and then I'll do uh, green for the leaves. Okay, now you can, I like to start with just doing, rolling a little spiral, okay? Polymer clay is so easy to work with. I like to start and end with a little spiral. That's it. Okay, I'm going to pick a spot on my wand here. I'm going to open my bacon bond. And I'm just going to kind of approximate where this is going to go. And again, if you don't have that, just press your clay in more as you go. Okay, and I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to kind of just let it fall where it wants to fall. And before I let it fall there, I'm going to let it have a little bit of this bacon bond. And I will continue down. And when the vine is going to end, like I said, I will do another spiral. Okay, that looks like it wants to go there. So we'll just, all right. So I'm going to just kind of intuitively feel where these go. And I'm going to carefully place them on. And if you want to give them a little texture, um, I love this little teeny tiny ball tool here, dotting tool, if you will. Uh, you could use a needle, anything, toothpick. I'm just going to kind of lightly put some lines on these. And while I'm doing that, I'm kind of pressing the vine into, all right, just so when we antique these, uh, it has more texture, looks a little more realistic, and yeah, gives it some more detail. 
I think. So I'm going to continue this, okay? Laying down the vines, texturizing the vines. We're going to do brown on this side, purple on the other, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we're going to do the leaves. So I'll see you when I'm all vined up. Okay, I got all the vines on, and you can see, and all that bacon bond will dry clear so you won't see it. Now at this point, if you want to put it in the oven for another 20 minutes or so, you can, and then come back and do the leaves, but I'm going to do it all together. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Okay, I'll show you how we're going to do the leaves. Let me set this aside. I've taken some more of my Primo. I have three different colors of orange. I'm not really sure what they are. <laughs> They're all Primo. I've mixed them together and I flattened them out in my pasta machine. Now, if you don't have a pasta machine, you can use a roller. If you don't have a roller, you can use your hands, okay? So I have this on a piece of glass here. Now I want two different size leaves. So I do have this little teardrop uh, metal cutter that you can easily just, you know, cut out leaves. And then I'm going to take a, just a needle tool here and add some detail, very simply texture the sides up and then I'll actually cut through the edges and something like that okay so those are the larger ones and then for a smaller one I just use my exacto knife and same thing just cut out like an eye shape or you can do smaller ones diamond shape little ovals. I want them to be irregular and same thing. I'm just going to use this tool and draw the veining as mu much texture as possible including the sides. Uh, anywhere that there's a smooth space I like to texturize. Okay so now that we have leaves and I'm going to use a bunch of them so make a bunch then I have some here on this dish already done I'll just show you how we're going to attach them same thing with the bacon bond I'm just going to put a little on the back of the leaf if you don't have this just press you can use your ball tool um, be careful. All right, and I'm going to just kind of do these in groups of two. So like a big leaf and then a smaller leaf. Okay, and I'm going to do those up and down, including the back. And same thing with the purple guy. I'm going to use the same color green for the purple guy as well. So when that's done, I'll see you back here, and then we're going to bake it again. Okay, these are ready to go into the oven. I'll show you the other one. This one's so pretty. Okay, so we're going to do another 20 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit, and I'll see you back here when that's done. All right, see you in a few minutes. Okay, these are cooling still, but this one's pretty cool, so I'll show you with this one. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to antique it or age it, make it look a little older. And this step really brings out all the texture in the nooks and crannies. I'm going to throw on an old pair of latex gloves. And I have a mixture for this one of black and brown uh, multi-surface satin paints by Americana. Uh, one's in 
black tie and the other one is coffee bean and I've just mixed them together on my palette with some water. I have a damp paper towel and a dry paper, paper towel and we're just going to brush on the black and then blot it off. Now with the other wand I'm going to use uh, this true blue and maybe a little of the black on that because I don't want it so dark but I will show you an example of the other one. So, all right, I'll just show you quickly. And this can be a scary part for some people who aren't used to this because they feel like they're covering up the whole thing. But as long as you don't let that paint dry, um, it's fine. And it's acrylic paint, so it comes off easily. But we're just going to cover every nook and cranny that's really what we're going for and we'll blot the paint right off the surface and what remains will accent all of our lovely texture and after I do this step and they dry we are going to put a layer of glaze on them and I'll show you that in a second okay so that's covered and I have a damp paper towel here and I'm literally just going to blot and roll. I'm going to keep it kind of grungy and kind of messy. If that's not the look you're going for, if you want something that's brighter than that, you can skip this step. But I really think this is the part where the magic takes over. So. Okay, there you have it. I'm going to let this dry, and then when it's dry, and like I said, I'll do the other one too, um, I'm going to put a layer of this Sculpey Gloss Glaze, and then they'll, I'll let them dry, and then we'll come back and finish off our top part here. Okay? So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I changed my mind. I figured I'd show you before I glaze them. This is what this one looks like with the blue. Love. The star got a little wonky here, and that's fine. It'll reshape easily. Um, and also, be careful that you don't overwork your metal. You know, it, it. this is just cheap wire, so if you bend it too much, it will break. So be, be you know, you don't have to be paranoid about it, but be cautious. Okay? So, like I said, just going to go in. I'm going to do one coat of this, and I will hang them to dry. You can hang them by the wire at the top, or you could actually put them upside down in a bowl of rice or something. Um, I'll be hanging them. So just going to brush this on like so, and I'm going to let them dry overnight. So I'll be seeing you guys in the morning. Well, good morning. These are nice and dry now. What do you think, guys? Okay, the next thing we're going to do, I'm really loving this one, by the way. Um, and I'm just going to demonstrate on one because really you can do whatever you want here. But what I plan to do is to wrap this existing wire with a contrasting wire and make a spiral in the center. Now, it, it's hard to tell you exactly how to do this because depending on how big your wire is. You can always trim it, but I'll show you what I do. I'm going to just kind of guide it along the inside of my existing circle here to just get an idea. And I'm just going to make a spiral shape. Now, I will come in with my uh, wire pliers uh, to perfect that, but that's just to get an idea of how I want that, okay? And that's going to go in the center. Now, let me show you, if you don't know how to make a spiral uh, out of wire, it's really easy. I just have a scrap piece of wire here and a pair of round nose pliers. Um, and I have a wire cutter here. Um, you're going to take your wire and at the try to grab it at the very, very end, okay? Which can be tricky sometimes. And then literally just guide your wire around that round nose. Now you can either turn your pliers or turn your fingers. 
all right until you kind of meet there now you can see that's not a perfect circle at all it's like a teardrop shape so I'm actually going to take my wire cutters and I'm just going to you know and again protect your eyes etc I'm just gonna trim off that little end You don't have to do this, but see how it's more like a little hook now? And that should easily allow you to continue your spiral. And again, I find it easier to just let the wire be my guide. And you can use nylon pliers if you don't want to leave marks in your wire. I don't care that much and then I just kind of grab it and guide it and grab it and guide it all right so that's how I do a spiral and that's what I'm gonna do in the center here all right but also before I do that I'm going to take this contrasting uh, gold wire you can do silver you can do whatever you want and I'm going to I don't really know how much to tell you to cut and I'm going to err on the side of having a little too much but I'm going to cut some of this wire here and I'm just going to anchor it here and I'm going to use a bead just to make it fun let's see I have a sparkly bead and I'm just going to thread it on all right and hold it here against the top of my wand all right and I'm going to just cross it and use the wand to twist all right so we have that and I'm just gonna let that kind of hang out we'll deal with that later you can make it a sh you know it doesn't have to be that long I actually did make it a little too long but all I'm gonna do now is thread this wire and it's painstaking this is the like the most tedious part of the whole process all right and I'm just going to go all the way around in and out all the way around the circle and the spiral and it's easier for me to just do it um, but I'm just gonna go around go around go around and I'll be back and we'll twist it at the end here to anchor it okay see you in a minute I'm gonna do the same thing with the blue wand maybe a little different but I'll show you alright guys this is what I came up with and I have some other examples I'm gonna show you too but see how I just wrap that gold wire all the way around the silver wire and I did the spiral and all these little nooks and crannies are good to hold the bubble solution too and just the little bead there so very simple and I'm gonna call this one done this guy here I kept it super simple I left the middle open I just did a bead here at the bottom and same thing I wrapped copper colored wire added some beads at the points of the star and the last thing I'm going to do to this guy is just add a little bit of bling. So I have some of these like, you know, rhinestone things, flat back gems, and I'm just going to scatter a few around. I'll probably use this. Um, and then we're going to call it done. So I will show you a few more. Let me just glue these on and I'll be back. And we'll blow some bubbles. Okay, guys, I'm going to call these done. What do you think? I'm in love with them. I know you're going to love them, too. I can't wait to see what you guys create. Please tag me. You know, you can use these all year round. They don't have to just be used for bubbles. But how much fun. I'll put some pics at the end so you can get some close-ups. And let me show you a few other ones that I've made. There's this one. And 
and this I did with the black clay and purple mica powder and black vines and I tried to do the top a little different and I added a little bling here so love that yeah you can customize these however you want the wire is so forgiving this is actually the very first one that I made and you can see that I just use the wire to kind of grab you know there's many many examples on Pinterest um, you know I tried to do my own interpretations and I'm sure you guys will too and then I couldn't stop I could have done this over and over again there's this one with a little heart and the bead and same thing this is just like the twigs I love these and two more these are also done with the white clay there's a star with a spiral and a bead and this time instead of using and I also wrapped wire around it you could do uh, beading on your wire that you wrap you can embed crystals or beads in the clay uh, before you bake it you know there's a million different options um, I also used I forgot to tell you some rub and buff on some of these just to highlight a little bit um, any kind of metallic glaze if you want and then this is the last one um, did like a kind of a more oval shape at the top with a spiral and a bead and again with the wire and this one doesn't have any leaves so what do you think you guys give me a thumbs up do you have a favorite do you like the you know the stick like ones better than the fantasy ones or you know I just I love them all it would be really hard for me to pick a favorite so I'm not going to I'm going to blow some bubbles um, everybody has a favorite bubble recipe I usually just use a cup of water I have this in a ball jar ball jar here cup of water a couple tablespoons of dish detergent and I didn't have any glycerin a lot of people use glycerin but I used two tablespoons of caro syrup and that um, increases the surface tension on your bubbles and they last a little longer so let me take some pics and I'll flip the camera around and we'll blow some bubbles and please you guys don't forget to check out my gypsy sister Miss Rita Marie I'll put all the links below as well as our Facebook group the gypsy and the witch where we do monthly projects over there so we'd love to see you there and let me know comment tell me what you think about this project give me any suggestions on how I may have improved it or what you might do I'd love to hear from you okay see you in a minute okay guys I love them all right I'll just pick a random one and let's try to make some bubbles cheers do you guys like to blow bubbles I'm such a kid I hope this works ah uh. Yay! Okay, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great month. I'm going to play with this, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.